Hello Nation. Today we're going to talk about the artificial pancreas. Now, I've had type 1 diabetes since 1970. That's 42 years ago. When I was first diagnosed, I asked my doctor, when is there going to be a cure? He said, 10 to 15 years, Steve. Don't worry about it. I went to college. I met Mayor Davidson, who's a diabetes specialist. I said, Mayor, when will there be a cure? He said, Steve, 10 to 15 years. I did my training in part at the Jawson Clinic in Boston. And I talked to all the diabetes specialists. And I asked them, when is there going to be a cure for type 1 diabetes? They said, Steve, 10 to 15 years. Now, if a patient walked in my office, newly diagnosed with type 1, and they said, Dr. Edelman, when will there be a cure? I can honestly look them in the face and say, 10 to 15 years. Now, the cause of type 1 diabetes is an autoimmune process. For some reason, the immune system goes crazy and produces these antibodies that attack our own insulin producing cells and destroys them. And that's why every person with type 1 diabetes, every single person, needs insulin therapy. So a real cure is identifying people who have these destructive antibodies before they get diabetes and institute some immune-based therapy that halts the destructive process. But we're a long way away because we don't really know what causes our immune system to go awry. So in between, something to bridge the gap until there is a real cure is the artificial pancreas. Now there's several major research institutions around the world working on this. The Juvenile Diabetes Research Foundation is really funding these projects big time because they think that they can come up with an artificial pancreas fast enough that will help control people's diabetes until a cure comes along. Now, I don't want to bust anybody's bubble, but there are a lot of roadblocks before we finally come up with a good artificial pancreas. One of the biggest problems is shown on this screen right here. This shows the normal physiology. A normal individual's pancreas secretes insulin, amylin, which is the same as simlin, and glucagon into the portal vein, goes right into the circulation, and acts within seconds to minutes. Wrap it on and wrap it off. So what happens in a normal individual is, as the blood sugars go up, insulin comes out, glucagon, which works against insulin, goes down, and amylin goes up as well to help keep the blood sugars in a very narrow range. Between 70 and 140, 99% of the time, no matter what that individual eats, one hot fudge sundae, two hot fudge sundaes, three hot fudge sundaes. And the problem is, as we develop an artificial pancreas, when we give these hormones, we give it in the subcutaneous fat. And the subcutaneous fat leads to a lot of variabilities in the mechanism and time course of action. So the, that's one big issue. We have pumps that have dual chambers. We, uh, we have all kinds of ways to give these hormones, but it's very unphysiologic. The other issue is continuous glucose monitoring. Now, I'm lucky enough to be in a clinical study to use an investigational product, at least as of today, the Gen 4 Dexcom continuous glucose monitoring device. This is an, the best one on the market, no question, at the current time, but guess what? We even have to get more accurate because if we're going to have a lot of variables with the absorption of these other hormones, we need a very accurate CGM device. Now, we already have the computers and the really sophisticated algorithms that, tell, that will tell our pump to go up on the insulin and down on the glucagon when you go up. And as your blood sugars drop, insulin and simlin turn off and glucagon comes on to prevent a serious low. So, although the artificial pancreas is going to bridge the gap until there's a real cure, we still have a long way to go. But hang in there, nation.